Good morning. The shocking rise in mobile phone thefts. A phone is now stolen every 10 minutes in London, for example. I'll look at why banking apps are making your device such a target for gangs. Uh, we've had reports of this walking to the car park at work. It's something that's on the rise. It's thefts of mobile phones. They've been increasing in recent years, making them one of the most stolen items. And it happens like this so quickly taking people completely unawares. Just Shocking. some of the incidents it's of smart, yeah, smartphone phone thefts that have been caught on camera. And th these pictures are from London, where Metropolitan Police are saying that a phone is taken every 10 minutes. Mm. Ben's been taking a look at this. Uh, he's got the business this morning. And it, it is on the rise. You, anecdotally, you hear a lot about it now. Yeah, and I, I've seen it, you know, on the street. Have you? Someone walking along, two guys on a bike, sped up, snatched the phone out of her hand, she started to chase them, she was really distraught because she didn't stand a chance, and by the time you realise what's going on, it's too late to try and stop them and intervene. And, of course, there are concerns for your own safety as well, were you to try and intervene. Yeah. But that's just one case of many. Good morning. Yeah, these incidents, unfortunately, where thieves snatch phones from unsuspecting victims happen so quickly. And figures show now that smartphones are the most frequently stolen item being taken in more than a third of thefts in England and Wales. Look, it's that red line there. It's overtaken cards and cash. It's usually not the phones themselves, but it's what we store on them that make them so attractive for thieves. The mobile banking apps or having debit or credit card payments set up in the phone's digital wallet. If the thieves have seen your pin or forced you to reveal it, they can then easily go and spend money on those cards. And the mobile banking apps can give them easy access to your current and savings accounts. In fact, losses from mobile banking fraud totaled around £45 million last year. That is the highest ever recorded total. And more than 20,000 cases were reported. Of course, any violent crime like that is traumatic for the victim. But are there any steps you can take to better protect yourself? I've been finding out. Police give chase after receiving a report of a stolen mobile phone in central London. This police footage shows two thieves on e-bikes fleeing after stealing a smartphone out of a victim's hand who was using it on the street. When officers catch the rider, they find not one, but 24 stolen phones on him. It's a crime that's becoming more common. Mobile devices are the most stolen item now in England and Wales, according to the latest ONS crime survey. Criminals find various ways to get hold of the phones, knowing they usually contain valuable financial and personal data. This man, who wanted to stay anonymous, was out with work colleagues when his drink was spiked, his phone was taken, and he was defrauded of more than £20,000. There was a credit card transaction made via Google Play. There was also three bank transfers. Um, the whole time these criminals had my phone, they were able to access my financial apps. And these uh, four transactions resulted in significant money being withdrawn from my business and personal accounts, uh, which has had a serious impact on my ability to, to run my company. Um, and it's also had a, a serious impact on my mental health and that of my family. Although the devices themselves are valuable and often sold on, it's now the credit and debit cards stored on them, as well as banking and other financial apps, that the thieves are after. Primarily what's in it for them is data, of course. Uh, these days we've got all our financial and banking apps on our phones and, um, uh, and all manner of you know, passwords saved perhaps for, for every service we engage with. And that's primarily what they're after. That's, that attracts a high price on the dark web as people who will pay many times the value of the handset just for the data that's on them. Meanwhile, this man's traumatic experience and the financial fallout has made him more vigilant. Since the incident occurred, I've deleted a lot of financial apps off my phone and I've also disabled facial recognition and thumb and fingerprint access just in case. Of course, in his case, he was unsettled because the facial recognition and the thumbprint recognition, he was forced to do that to unlock his phone. Experts say that tends to be more secure, though, than 
using your pin all the time. There are some things you can do to better protect your phone and its data, though, things like having Find My Phone enabled and also switch stolen device protection on so that you can remotely wipe it if it does get taken. And if you're using your phone in public, if you have to, be aware of who's around you. If you're in a crowded place, make sure no one's looking over your shoulder as you type in your pin. Uh, we'd love to hear from you this morning. Um, hopefully it hasn't happened to you, but if it has, uh, have you had your phone stolen? Have you been defrauded as a result? Has it happened to someone in your family? How did you deal with it? And what do you do now? Let us know. Details on the screen. Get in touch in all the usual ways. I think you're going to be getting a lot of messages. A lot so. of messages. A lot of it is, is, is down to common sense. You think, where would the hotspots be? Outside a station where people are looking for directions uh, on their phone, try and avoid using your phone there, maybe stay in the, in the ticket lobby, get your directions, and then go with your phone safely tucked away. And if you're making a call, try to use headphones, if yeah. you've got them. Ben, thanks very much.